In this video, we're going to create a lovely multi-layered text effect that's fully editable, all in Adobe Illustrator. Rightio, so I'm now in Illustrator with my new document, and if you'd like to follow along, you can download this file in the video description. So you can see I have my swatches here. These are global swatches. So if I change these swatches at any point, they update throughout the entire document. Very handy. Next, I've got the gradient panel pinned here as well, and underneath the appearance panel. And if you don't see any of these, you can go to Window, select all of them here, and then dock them on the right-hand side. Now with the Type tool, I'm going to click in the center and type a word. I'm going to type Electric, and then with the Selection tool, I'm going to click and drag the corner to scale this up. And remember to hold Shift, otherwise it will skew out of shape. Next, let's align the text centrally, and also align this centrally on the artboard. So that's a good start, but now I need a font. And I'm going to get one from this video sponsor, Invato Elements. And here we are. So as you can see, there's 104,000, what? what? Woo, that's a lot of assets for just this week. And this includes stock video, music, sound effects, graphics, photos, fonts, add-ons like brushes, templates, 3D graphics, and so much more. So I'm going to navigate over to the fonts tab, and there's loads here to choose from. I can also filter these on the left-hand side, and because I know the font I'm going to use, I can go up to the search bar at the top and type Hergi. What an unusual name. I can now click this, get a nice big preview and see a few graphics demonstrating how it can be used. And when I'm happy, click the download button, assign this to a project and then click add and download. And this is just one of millions of assets that come with unlimited downloads, a commercial license, all for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. And there's a link below if you'd like to find out more. So I've already installed my Hergi font. So now I can go and select this from the dropdown. And there we go, looking good. I'm just going to scale this up a little bit more. And now we can start the fun stuff. So let's go to the appearance panel. And from the icons in the bottom left corner, I'm going to click the middle one, which enables me to add a fill color. From the dropdown, I can select my pink color. And if we come out of that, we can see that pink has been applied to the text. Now, before we go any further, I do need to set up some gradient swatches so let's grab the rectangle tool, click and hold shift to draw a square, open up the gradient panel, click on the slider to add the default gradient, and then clicking those swatches at either end, add white to one end, and then the pink to another. And if you've done this correctly, you should now have a box with your white to pink gradient applied as the fill color. Now I'm going to duplicate this by holding alt or option and dragging. And if you hold shift as well, you can keep it in line. Now with this second shape selected, again, I'm going to apply two different colors to the gradient. And looking at the swatches I have available, this is going to be like a medium purple going to a dark purple. As you can see, I'm being very indecisive here. Come on down, we haven't got all day. Okay, good, finally. Now for the next step, we need to create these gradients as swatches, but make sure you don't drag them into the swatches panel because it will make them as a pattern. Instead, click the new icon and then you can give the gradient a name and it will add this into the swatches panel as a gradient swatch. Let's just do this with the other one. And the beauty of this setup is if I want to change the color of the gradient, I just have to update the global swatches. So now that's all set up, let's delete that first box and then I'm going to use the other one as a background. Now you can see it's not snapping to the corner. If it's not, go to view, down to smart guides and turn those on. Now this will snap to the edges of your artboard so you can resize this nice and easy. Now, of course it's on top of everything, that's no good. So let's go to object, arrange and center back. And now I can go object, lock and selection just so I don't move it by mistake. Okay, now let's select the text and go back to the appearance panel and add another new fill and I'm going to select the color as white. Now the layer stack in the appearance panel is important, so you can see the white is underneath the pink, so of course we can't see it. If we click the effects icon, we can add a transform effect. And if I use the sliders here for the move property, you can see I can adjust the position of the white fill specifically. You can also use negative values as well. So I'm going to go with minus two for both of these, and you can see it creates a nice little highlight. Let's add another fill. And from the drop down, select the slightly darker pink and then drag this underneath the white. Again, let's go to the effects icon, but this time go to path and select offset path. And if you followed my other videos, you'll be familiar with this one. And here I'm offsetting this with a positive value to create a border around the text. Okay, let's add another new fill and drag this to the bottom. And on that bottom fill, let's set the color to purple. You can see we're gradually getting darker with the colors. And again, I'm going to go to distort and transform and add a transform effect. Now I'm going to offset this by, let's try eight for both and see how that looks. 
Mm, I think I might just make that a bit bigger. We'll go for 12 and 12. And there we go, that's offset down and to the right. And I can actually duplicate this fill by clicking the plus icon at the bottom of the panel. And I can select an even darker purple. But if I twizzle this down, you can see I've already got that transform effect applied. So I just have to open the effect up and edit those values. Next, let's go to the effects icon again, go down to stylize and select drop shadow. I'm going to bring the opacity down to somewhere around 50% just so it's not as pronounced and increase the blur so the shadow is nice and soft. And if I hide and show this effect, you can see it just lifts the text off the background. Okay, next I'm going to go back to that very first pink fill and change that to the white to pink gradient. Then with that selected, I can go to the gradient panel and adjust the properties of the gradient. So here you can see me adjusting the angle. I can also make the pink swatch more dominant by clicking on that swatch and dragging it along the gradient slider. And as you can see, the pink now occupies more space and this is reflected in the design. And the great thing about setting up text this way is that we maintain maximum flexibility, being able to change the text itself, the font, the font properties, and all of the effects we added in the appearance panel. And as I mentioned, all of the swatches are global swatches. So even if I want to edit something in a gradient, I double click the swatch, check preview and I can change those colors and every instance of that color is updated throughout the entire document. So in this example, nothing too radical. I'm just changing that white to a very light pink. Next, I'm going to select the text again and open up the appearance panel. Select the very light pink fill and then duplicate this. And I'm going to change the fill color to one of the darker purples. Now, if I click on the transform effect, I can change this and I'm going to change the negative two to a positive two. And I can also see how this effect looks with a few different colors. And something else we can do for each fill is click on opacity and we can change the blending mode. So I'm going to set this to soft light and you can see it's a bit more subtle. I'm also going to try this with the very light pink and just see how it looks. Oh no, I think we'll leave that set at normal, but I can still bring the opacity down just a pinch from that panel or you could just edit the swatch color. It's entirely up to you. Okay, let's close that panel down and get a good look at the final design. Be beautiful. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So if you enjoyed this one, you can subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, take care, and I'll see you next time.